bring them in, we're on to the next. You're not gonna waste that much time. It's kind of one of the key things I kind of want to leave it with is, as much as we're taught and we've always fished is, once you find fish, don't leave them. There's a, yes, that is true. But you need to be willing to go explore a little bit more, right? You see a pile of boats over here. They're not on the only fish in the ocean. Some days, yes. Some days it might be the only school of tuna within a hundred miles, right? And we know that we're all working it. But you gotta move around. Um, you guys, when you fish the bank, let's say you fish the bay, you know, I don't know, I, I call it don't get concrete feet or don't put lead in your shoes. Don't sit here and cast over and over and fan cast and sit there for an hour fishing that 30 feet of water without getting bit. You need a cast, didn't, didn't get bit, move over here. 30 yards down here, there may be a piece of grass or something that the bass are sitting on, right? You need to cover ground. Same thing with offshore. Keep going, find those fish, find the fish that wanna eat, find the fish that wanna do something for you. That's kind of, that's all I got. <laughs> Sure, I didn't talk about that at all. Um, yeah. You know, I was trying to get more about the hows and, and, and why. Uh, when I'm offshore, I'm gonna have 10 weights. For two guests, I have two 10 weights rigged with sinking line, one 10 weight rigged with floating line, two 12 weights rigged with sinking line, and a 13 weight rigged with sinking line. I fish sinking line offshore, everywhere. I, I, I also own a tarpon fishing lodge in Costa Rica. And that's an intermediate to floating weight fishery, but I fish a full sink line. I personally, when it comes to fly fishing, I like the versatility of a heavy line. I can do more with a heavy line in water column than I can with a floating line. So um, I usually fish all sinking line. Even if they're up and boiling, I'm fishing sinking lines. I do keep a floating line with a popper so when we get in those patty situations of dorados and yellowtail and they're doing it can't beat that the other thing don't ever pass up is a popper with a sinking line okay if, if we're ripping fish and having fun and i want to try something different i'll grab a client's rod i may have eight feet a liter i'll add four more feet on and i'll put a, a bob's popper on there and i'll tell them to cast it out i'll say wait leave it let the belly sink i'll throw a couple pieces of chum between the boat and the fly and it goes bloop, bloop, and it dives down and they go ape shit over it. <laughs> There's always something you can do there to try and try and persuade them to bite it. Uh, 10 weight to 13 weight, full sinking lines, anywhere from 20 to 40 pound liters. If they'll let me eat, if they'll let me fish 40, I'll fish 40. What length do you use? Typically nothing longer than six to eight feet, unless they're being real picky. Well, the main reason for that is to not break rocks. Um, I like to keep the leader out of the rod tip and still be able to land the fish. If they're being finicky and I need to get longer leaders, like with the bluefin and stuff, I may go up to 12 feet. Yeah. I go straight line. Yeah. I don't use any tapered leaders. Well, if I, I build a tapered leader. My 12 weight, my tuner rod is always gonna be 12 weight. Whether it's a 12 pound tuna or a 40 pound, I want 12 weight. Um, 40 to 30, that's usually what I'm starting with. Yeah. Uh, kelp patty rod is 30 to 20. Then from there, I add on what I need to. Okay, they're not eating this 20, let's go to 15. We had one of our only yellowfin bites this last season was at the tuna pins down south. And there was so much boat pressure on them, though you couldn't hook a yellowfin uh, on anything over 12 pounds. They're out there with a size four hook. That's how we were fishing fish last season. Do you, do you need a swivel on your line? No. If you're going to be dropping back and trolling a little bit more, you may want one. Yeah. And, but straight, straight loop to loop. Do you find any uh, good consistent color in the slide? Color of the fly? Is that what you're asking? 
I don't change flies very much. You may go out with me offshore all day and I may never touch that fly. Uh, I think it's more about the circumstance and the fish it has to tell me to change that fly. And, and I'm pretty true on that in a lot of fishing with a fly. Uh, I want I want a refusal first. I want, a, I want multiple fish to say, nope, uh-uh. And then I'm gonna start changing either pattern or color. Usually gonna start with color, right? usually going to start with color change more than pattern it's not too tricky out there we're not you don't need to match the hatch exactly um, again with the chum and trying to get these fish excited or the, the, the right fish they'll eat a hot dog so I'd re we want to find that right fish right? <laughs> can you clarify on the fly line um, do you use shooting heads at all or are they full sinking full sink full sink integrated yeah Here's why I like that. Um, not so much out here, but at my at, in Costa Rica, when I fish out there, I fish a river mouth on the ocean side. And when we fish that river mouth, you've got water coming out of the river, you've got a tidal water coming in, you've got a wind current the other direction. When you run a floating line to like a, a heavy shooting head, what happens is you don't know where your fly is. I've picked up my line before and it's been like this under the boat and my fly line was pointed that way and the lower current dragged it this way so a full sink just allows you to have more of a straight control with it yeah. full full length i mean the entire length of the uh, fly line, line is sink first hundred and first hundred yeah i mean the fly line. line not uh usually it's an intermediate yeah to a full way. sa makes a great one yeah, about a fly line in a long time but, uh, the tiny, yeah, where they have the three sink. Yeah. yeah, that's what I've got on all my tin weights for patty fish. I love, and it stays, I mean, it, it's straight and true to the fly. I got a question. Yes. So conventional gear, yeah. you hook a, a yellow tail, you go straight for the kelp. What do you do with the fly rod when they go straight? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you can do. Now, now, that was a great question. Okay. Um, early season springtime yellowtail on patties is my favorite time to fish yellowtail. We get bigger, we get nicer grade fish in, and the pressure hasn't been on them yet. Now, those fish aren't always up under the patty like I told you. So when we do that wrap technique, if I hook him on the up current side or up drift side, and I go into neutral, that boat's going to drift around the patty, and we're going to drag it right to the patty. If if we're on our fifth drift on this thing and they keep going in the patty, as I run up to the wind, okay, I've got the patty here. The wind is pushing hard this way. If we hook a fish here with the fly rod going to the boat, and my boat's on the drift here, obviously we're gonna drag it into the kelp. So what am I going to do if I know those fish are on it and they're eating and we keep getting stuck in the kelp? I'm going to stop my boat here and I'm going to cast to it. I want to hook them on the down current side of the paddy. That's if you, if you get yourself in a situation, you keep getting into the paddy, you need to hook the fish on the down current side and, and then you're fine. Now, now you're drifting away. If they get in the patty, you just pull and try and break them off so you can hook another one that might not go I mean, I've never lost a fish that way before, that's why I said Oh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> you try a kelp cutter. You should do that. Your nose is growing delicious. Who else? The, that's uh, it. Cedar, cedar plug. Mm -hmm. Is that... Do you use that just because it's tradition? Or? Well, I use that because it's our number one tuna fishing lure. Okay. Yep. And that's almost worldwide. Yeah. Tuna, we can't, I mean, when, when we're on our, when we're, uh, these bigger tuna, you know, all these big bluefin, uh, once we start getting over that 40 pound range, a lot of 60s and 80s, uh, even the bigger jumbo ones, we've been running um, spreads of cedar plugs, five spread cedar plugs. Usually what gets bit first in the season, the plug. They love it, love the action. That's it in a nutshell, guys. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mike, for our great presentation. Uh, we'd like to
have him come back. He does run uh, operations down in Costa Rica. You mentioned about tarpon fishing, so maybe we can schedule.